In this video, we will demonstrate several methods of operating Miracle's dual access MEMS mirrors. While these devices are mechanical spring mass systems with a continuous range of responses, we will simplify this continuum to three modes or methods of operation. These three modes are quasi static or point to point mode, resonant quasi static mode, and resonant mode. They are described within several documents and application notes which can be found on our website at miracletech.com support documentation portal and on the left hand side pdf guides and resources some key documents for understanding the topics of this video are the mems mirror technical overview and application note 5 resonant scanning for now, we'll assume you've read these documents, and we'll be demonstrating how you can use Miracle's development kits and the included software suite to employ the aforementioned three modes of operation. To get started, we chose the middle-sized mirror in the standard dev kit. It's an A7M 20.2, a highly versatile 2mm diameter integrated mirror, which is used in many applications. We have also prepared the standard dev kit by following the first couple of steps of the MEMS Mirror Development Kit Quick Start Guide. This is also inside the documentation portal under User Guides. We have the USB MEMS controller connected to a Windows PC and we have installed the Miracle software suite which includes several SDKs and applications. For this video, we'll be primarily using the Miracle Draw application. But as described in the Quick Start Guide, we want to copy the device specific MTI device.ini file into the working folder of our software suite before using it. The working folder can be found in your C drive, Miracle Tech, and the EXE folder. The device specific any file can be found in your provided thumb drive in the device data files folder. We then choose the any file with the device's serial number. In this case, the serial number of our A7M 20.2 is S64868. We want to copy the any file into the exe folder. One way to do this is to create a copy here and rename it such that there is no trailing serial number. The file should just be MTI device. Now we can drag and drop this into the exe folder, replacing the previous file. The provided PDF documents here are each device's characterization report, which we encourage looking over. The values in this report should match with the corresponding any file, and this is easy to confirm. But for now, we're ready to use Miracle Draw. For further information on the startup steps, please refer back to the Quick Start Guide. The first mode we'll discuss is quasi static, also referred to as point to point mode. In this mode, both axes of the device are utilizing its wide bandwidth without allowing resonant response. Many of its functions can be demonstrated within Miracle Draw. Let's zoom in. The first thing we can do is steer to and hold a DC position. This is done under Signal Generator and Waveform. First, enable your laser output and MEMS driver. Now, using the X and Y voltage sliders to the left, you can steer to and hold any DC position. We can also apply a DC offset to the scan by using the X and Y offset boxes to the bottom right. While the positional repeatability of the MEMS mirror and driver system is at least 14 bits, the GUI will limit us to two decimal places. We can input 0.55, and negative 0.85. The laser moves accordingly. 
Another thing we can do is draw vector graphics by setting the program mode to vector graphics. Changing the refresh rate for the camera. We can now see that we're drawing the trace of a sine wave through time. To reach the maximum angle that is specified for our device, we'll increase the V difference to the max value, which is loaded from the MTI device.ini file that we copied into the folder earlier. Now we set our X amplitude to 1, and we're getting roughly the expected 20 degrees of optical angle. Under vector graphics, we can draw any arbitrary shape. For example, we can draw user inputted text under Hershey TTF text. And here we draw hello. And finally, we can move with uniform velocity using the raster scan function under scan patterns. To see it more clearly on camera, we increase the time per line to 100 milliseconds per line and increase the X and Y amplitude. And now we see a smoothly moving dot. With our X amplitude set to 1 and our V difference set to its max value, we again see roughly 20 degrees of optical angle, as expected. For applications that require scanning and holding across sequences of positions, we can simply change the raster type to point to point, although this is a little bit difficult to see on camera. The next of the three modes we'll demonstrate is Resonant Quasi-Static Mode, or RQ Mode for short. For this approach, we'll keep one axis in the quasi-static or point-to-point -point range of frequencies while driving the other near resonance. Since we'll be driving the MEMS close to its resonant frequency, it's important that we do not exceed the maximum angle supported by the device. To do this, we recommend driving the resonating axis with much lower voltages, typically around 5-10% to of the maximum recommended V difference for the device. This number depends on a combination of many properties, such as the X amplitude, the V difference, the X frequency, and the low-pass filter cutoff frequency. Also, it is not recommended to drive the device at exactly the resident frequency. The goal is to stay a few percent away from the peak residence while still achieving the goals for angle and scanning rate. Miracle Draw provides a feature specifically for resident quasi-static scanning called RQ Explorer, short for Resonant Quasi-Static Explorer. We can use it by going to Signal Generator and RQ Explorer. This pop-up is a reminder that we should again take a look at our device's characterization report before proceeding. Now is a good time to note the resonant frequency of the device we're using. For this particular mirror, the resonant frequency for both axes is 1316 hertz. Accept the warning and proceed. In RQ Explorer, the X axis is driven at residence while the Y axis scans a sawtooth wave. So for this section, we'll be using the X resonance frequency. Please make sure your MEMS driver is disabled while doing the startup steps. And now we can change our focus to the hardware filter. Since we had been driving in quasi-static mode, our hardware filter currently has a cutoff frequency well below the resident frequency. We should instead set this to 90% of the resident frequency of the x-axis, or 90% of 1316 hertz. In this case, that's 1185 hertz. We can set the starting X frequency to the same value. As we're still driving the Y axis in quasi static mode, the Y software low pass filter should still be set to the recommended cutoff, in this case 500, in order to prevent overshooting and oscillation on the Y axis. On the other hand, now that X will be near resonance, we want to use a safe voltage. V difference can be set to its max value but please make sure to change X amplitude accordingly. The default of 0.2 in this case is a good starting point for these particular settings. Now enable the laser output and the MEMS driver and begin increasing the X frequency slowly while observing the device's response. 
Looking too fast is not recommended. That was definitely a large jump in ankle. And now we have clearly excited the x-axis as resonance. And we're getting about 23 degrees of optical angle with much lower voltages compared to the quasi-static mode. Also notice that we are a few percent away from the characterized resonant frequency, not exactly at it. And because that this is intrinsically a continuum, we could still have benefits as we drive with frequencies farther from resonance. For example, even back here, we already have a relatively large angle increase from our starting point. But now we can change the X amplitude and adjust other settings as desired. But again, please exercise caution when changing settings near resonance. The last mode is resonant mode, which is exactly what we showed previously on the X axis but now both axes will be driven near resonance. Since we will be coupling two sinusoidal waveforms, we can specify the parameters of our function, the release edge function. We can find these parameters by going to signal generator and lease edge But please make sure your MEMS driver is disabled before heading into this. We'll repeat what we just did in the previous section. So we'll keep the cutoff the same at about 1,185. We'll increase the V difference to the maximum value while decreasing the amplitude to 0 0.2. The X and Y starting frequencies can have starting values the same as the cutoff frequency, so at 1,185. Now we can enable the laser output and the MEMS driver and begin walking the frequencies one axis at a time. We'll start with the X axis here. So right off the bat, we've excited resonance on the X axis, so we can move on to the Y axis. And now we have excitation of both axes resonance. As mentioned in resonant quasi-static mode, we recommend staying above or below the given resonant frequency in the characterization report by a few percent, as we've done here. The continuum mentioned in the last section applies here too, so we don't have to be extremely near resonance to reap the benefits. This was a brief overview of three methods of driving Miracle's gimballess dual axis quasi-static MEMS mirrors. For a more detailed look, please look through our documentation portal, where you can find a wide range of documents. For any other questions, please reach out to us at sales at miraclecheck.com or support at miraclecheck.com. Thank you for choosing Miracle.